In this video review, we will take a detailed look at a rather recent addition to the Enderverse, namely The Last Shadow. This novel is at the same time the sixth book in the Shadow series as well as the sixth book in the Ender Saga. Thus, with that knowledge, it should be unsurprising to you that Orson Scott Card converges the plots of the aforementioned two series in this 315 page long book, which was published in the year 2021. Building upon the developments that concluded Children of the Mind, The Last Shadow attempts to immerse itself in the realm of science fantasy, arguably pushing the boundaries of this genre more than any other installment within the sprawling Enderverse. While the narrative endeavors to maintain the established universe from preceding novels, it also introduces a new planet with distinctive properties. In this expansive backdrop, The Last Shadow unfolds with a plethora of characters, a majority of whom are familiar faces from previous storylines. However, the addition of entirely new protagonists seems more like an attempt to diversify the cast rather than to bring forth truly original perspectives. Despite the mix of old and new characters, the narrative struggles to break free from the formulaic nature of its predecessors. Instead, it tries to treat a fine line between nostalgia and a lack of innovation. Unfortunately for the readers, it is not really successful at it. The Last Shadow fails to introduce substantially new concepts or ideas and seems to rely heavily on existing elements. In terms of its critical and popular reception, The Last Shadow is unremarkable as it was not nominated for any awards and received a combined rating of 3.8 out of 5 stars based on the numerous reviews from the typical aggregator sites. Thus, it scores at the tail end in comparison with the other entries to the Shadow series and Anders Saga. And there are reasons for this rating. However, before we start such a critical discussion, here is once more the typical word of advice related to potential spoilers. In this instance, parts of all novels within the Anders Saga and the Shadow series are in jeopardy of being spoiled. In addition, parts of the plots of The Last Shadow itself might be spoiled during the following discussion. If you want to listen to the final spoiler-free verdict, jump straight to the end of the spoiler discussion marked by the red bars. Heed this warning and take the necessary precautions. The storyline of The Last Shadow unfolds subsequent to the events in Shadows in Flight and Children of the Mind. Bean's three adult children, Ender, Carlotta and Sergeant, continue their journey aboard the Herodotus. Notably, they are now accompanied by their offspring, born during stopovers on various human colonies. The narrative takes a significant turn when the Herodotus crew is recruited to aid the colonists on Lusitania in addressing the persistent issue of the Descolada virus. While the immediate dangers of the Descolada have been mitigated via the Recolada, the virus still poses a profound existential threat to humanity and potentially other sapient species in the galaxy. The origins of this deadly virus remain elusive, but investigations point towards a planet inhabited by sentient species. The central question arises. Will there be a peaceful resolution or does the looming specter of another Xenocide threaten the galaxy's stability? The answer to these questions are poised to unfold as the narrative progresses. The introduction of new characters in The Last Shadow presents an attempt to address the perceived shortcomings of established figures like Ender, Carlotta and Sargent, who are portrayed as maladapted individuals who are forced to reconcile with their former spouses, who were forsaken and left without their children. It is plausible that Orson Scott Card shares the sentiment, acknowledging that these characters may not represent his finest creations. Bean's children certainly give the more annoying members of the Ribeira family a run for their money. However, despite the infusion of new characters, the novel suffers from a lack of innovation. 
The narrative retreats familiar ground with recycled plotlines, such as the quest to cure a virus and the theme of first contact with other sentient species. Moreover, what was once an arduous struggle, like managing FTL communication without FTL travel, or in later novels the limited use of FTL travel, now feels trivialized, akin to the power creep seen in anime where seemingly insurmountable challenges become easily surmountable. In addition, a significant narrative twist, revealing the inhabitants of the Descolada planet as descendants of Earth, dilutes the intrigue established in previous installments. The prospect of molecular-based communication hinted at in Children of the Mind offered tantalizing possibilities of encountering truly alien forms of interaction. And Orson Scott Card has shown us that he is capable of writing something similar with the Pekinius in Speaker for the Dead. The notion of an alien civilization communicating through synthesized molecules reminiscent of a sophisticated version of pheromones, was quite promising and intriguing. In particular, the humans exposed to this first line of communication were baffled by the Descoladores, quote-unquote, sending them the molecular structure of an opiate. Some of the researchers of this expedition interpreted this as a malicious act and an effort to sedate and incapacitate them, but one could equally argue that it was an alien civilization's way of attempting a peaceful first encounter. Basically a molecular offering to please the newcomers. However, this potential was criminally squandered by transforming the Descoladores into human descendants, augmented by sentient bird species. This trope of elevated animal species, while not unprecedented, fails to resonate in this instance, echoing themes seen in works like Planet of the Apes and some of Alistair Reynolds' novels. Even in these other works, the trope of augmented animal species often has mixed success, if you ask me. In addition, The Last Shadow fails to address pivotal revelations concerning the Hive Queen and her questionable relationship with her drones and workers, leaving a significant narrative threat and one of the few redeeming plot points of Shadows in Flight unresolved. Furthermore, the subterranean antagonists in the novel were not fleshed out and lack depth. Their motivations for opposing the Lusitanian explorers can be reduced to because we do not like them. Their resort to launching a biological attack on the explorers feels contrived, triggering the evacuation of the surface-dwelling birds and humanoids that rehashes a plot device from Children of the Mind, but without the same sense of urgency or tension. I know that I am repeating myself, but the narrative unfolds in a repetitive and ultimately an aimless manner. The true origin of the Descolada virus remains obscured. And any potential revelations clash with established timelines, since the descendants from Earth living on the Descolada planet cannot be responsible for the Descolada virus. The timing simply does not work out. The possibility of encountering a genuinely alien species with radically different modes of communication is squandered, as I mentioned previously, robbing the story of potential depth and complexity. Additionally, the characters fail to leave a lasting impression, falling short of the complexity found in earlier installments, though still avoiding the lows we explored in Shadows in Flight. As mentioned above, the three protagonists of that novel were basically sidelined. Overall, the question arises. Why? Why was The Last Shadow written at all? It fails to advance the series in any meaningful way, instead offering a narrative that feels uninspired and devoid of purpose. The Last Shadow struggles to break new ground, instead opting for recycled tropes and missed opportunities for genuine innovation. What's more, or potentially what's worse, it negatively impacts the yet unresolved but quite intriguing story points of the previous novels. The Last Shadow is, without a shadow of a doubt, the weakest entry to the Enderverse.
If you liked this video, you may also enjoy the other reviews and content on my channel. Feel free to leave a comment if you want to discuss the novels or if you want to suggest other books that I should review in the future. Please consider upvoting and subscribing, it is much appreciated. Thank you for watching and until next time.